What's up guys, this is Casey Underhill bringing you another Blender tutorial. I'm a little late this week, I started a new position at my job, things have been a little hectic. So, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be making a sunflower. Flowers are something that I enjoy to make in Blender, and it's uh, something that a lot of people like to put into vases, or they like to put them into grass fields, things like that, but uh, I really, I rarely ever see them as the main focus, and there's a good reason for that because flowers can be a little tricky to get to look very realistic so hopefully by the time we're done today we have a very good looking flower that we can use for our scenes so let's go ahead and click our little plus sign up here and I already have my background image loaded but let me show you the steps to do that there's a little option down here that says background image you're going to check that make sure it pops down you want to add your image so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that add image open and there we have our image set in the background so let me go ahead and show you what that image actually looks like there it is <coughs> I just went to Google and typed in sunflower and I think I may have cut this out myself it took me about I don't know five minutes maybe at most it's uh I liked it. I liked the like the red color kind of circling in between in the middle. <clears throat> and uh it's really important to have a transparent background because when we're finished with this, you're going to have to make sure that you don't have any black parts showing. Uh you'll see what I'm talking about later, but <clears throat> if you can go ahead and find one of these images, pause the video, um meet me back here and we'll get started on the tutorial. <clears throat> All right, guys, so welcome back. Uh, first thing we're going to do, make sure that you're in Cycles Render, because we are using Cycles today. And we're going to delete our cube by hitting X. And delete our lamp, also hitting X. And for some reason, my 3D cursor is all messed up, so let me go ahead and recenter that. Do, do, do. There we go. And if I go 7 on my numpad and 5 on my numpad, That'll take me to top and orthographic view so I can see my flower nice right up there in front. So, pretty easy, right? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and shift A to add a mesh plane. Then we're going to tab into edit mode. Hit A to deselect everything. And Z to go to wireframe mode. And B is going to bring up these little... Uh, like cross grid lines uh, it's gonna let you box select stuff so we're gonna box select these top vertices X and delete the vertices so now we're just left with this line with two vertices that's exactly what we want so I'm gonna box select that grab it up here and right at the start of my pedal I will hit S to scale it down and now we're going to basically just extrude so we're gonna hit E <coughs> To about here I'm gonna scale it up a little bit and we're just kind of guessing on some of these pedals on how big they actually are S extrude that and scale it in a bit extrude scale extrude and scale right like that so just like that we have our first petal of our flower and I know what you're thinking wow that doesn't look much like a flower petal at all <coughs> sorry guys my voice is going and uh, you'll see later that we're going to be able to fix this and it really will look like a flower. So, without any other vertices selected, make sure you select these bottom vertices. We're going to Shift D and that's going to duplicate them. We're just going to move on to our next petal. We're going to extrude, scale. This one's kind of a fat one. So, actually, I think I want to scale this out too. Scale that like that. <coughs> extrude that again scale it, extrude, scale it, extrude and scale it, extrude and we're going to scale that one way down. I'll pull it right about, yeah, right about in here. <coughs> now you're not trying to follow every single nook and cranny and curve of these flower petals. You just want them to be kind of, kind of right and you want them to be pretty much inside the actual petal of your flower sometimes that's not exactly possible that's okay we will fix that in post 
but we don't want to spend a whole mess of time messing with all of this stuff so you just want to make it look relatively close something decent just going to duplicate that and extrude it scale it out extrude scale extrude extrude we're going to rotate that one a little bit by hitting R scale extrude it a little bit more scale it down so hopefully you're getting the idea of this it's not too difficult but I will make sure that you guys are here for the entire process because honestly flowers you can spend a lot of time on them but you don't really have to that's the uh, nice thing about a lot of the uh, features of blender is that once we get this shape pretty much hashed out we'll be able to add a couple of modifiers and it'll look like a very nice flower <clears throat> And here we go. We're about a third, fourth of the way, fifth of the way through. <laughs> Something like that. Anyways, I'm just going to keep extruding and scaling and duplicating. And there's our extrusion and our scale. And I'll extrude, scale, scale that down right about there. All right. And if at any time you're confused about what I'm doing, I do have my screencast keys down here at the bottom, so you should be able to tell exactly what it is that I'm pushing on my keyboard. I like to go kind of fast. Um, I like to make these tutorials not necessarily for professionals or for beginners. I like to make them for people kind of in the middle who uh, they know what they're kind of doing in Blender, but they're just not entirely certain how to complete a project or they... They just want to add a little flair to their scenes, or they just want to know, I don't know, basic principles behind making certain objects, whatever it may be. Uh, if you are a beginner and you're trying to follow along, it might be a tad bit difficult, but if you pause the video and take some time out and really work hard, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. That's how I learned was... Uh, <coughs> basically just tinkering around in Blender and trying to get things to work and taking my time. And, you know, people, a lot of times people will talk about how they learn Blender and how they use tutorials and how they taught themselves and, oh, it was so easy and now they just want to teach you. You know what? Blender's not very easy. It's really not. Um, you have to at least watch a couple tutorials to figure out the interface and there are times when you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get frustrated with yourself. You're going to get frustrated with the program. You're going to get frustrated with the fact that whatever it is you're trying to make is just not turning out correctly. And a lot of times, you know, I wanted to give up, but you just got to stick with it. Sometimes if you get a little upset, you move on to a different project. Even if you go back to an old project or something like that, that... Uh, Actually, I like, I like to make flowers. Speaking of old projects, I like to make flowers because whenever I am getting a little frustrated and annoyed with my blending and I can't seem to make anything work, I always come into Blender and I just start making flowers. I know how to do them already. It's not a challenge. I usually don't upload any scenes or fancy artwork or anything f with my flowers. I just make them to make them. I don't know. It just reminds me sometimes that I do have the skills that will get me the results that I'm looking for if I just take my time. Also with uh, most of this stuff it's it's kinda relaxing. A little bit. Kinda. In a weird blender nerd type of way. <laughs> it's a little relaxing. So that's why I'm showing it to you guys today. Uh, I do have another big project that I'm working on right now. <coughs> and it's actually, I guess I can reveal this now. I'm working on a fairly large pirate ship. Uh, it's something that I've been trying to do for a while, and for the life of me, it has not been going fantastic. Um, it's very, very hard to get a boat shape in Blender out of geometrical shapes, but I think I figured it out, and I'm working on a lot of these small details, hashing that out right now. So if you saw my last tutorial on the simple 
uh, skyscraper building and thought, well, that was, I already knew that, or that wasn't very interesting. And then you come back this week and you say, oh, flowers, I don't, I don't really need to learn how to make flowers. I can make my own flowers. Um, just uh, keep holding in there because as soon as I get this pirate ship finished, I will be making a nice tutorial for it. And hopefully it will be just as interesting as my Japanese den tutorial that everybody seems to really enjoy. <clears throat> I know it's not architecture or anything uh, useful or fancy, but uh, I thought it was really cool. And you know, people a lot of times they like to mess with specifically architecture or uh, science fiction or any they like to focus on one particular thing in blender and I'm not I don't really like that you know when the mood strikes me to make something or I see a good picture and I just wanna I wanna I don't know I feel inspired to go out there and make it then I just hop into blender and see what I can do so if these tutorials are kinda all over the place and you're like well you know, I'm not really looking for this one or not really looking for that one. Just hold on tight because next week you never know what's going to be coming. Might be something good, might be something you don't like. I don't know. That is just the name of my game. That's how I roll. I like to do exactly what I like to do. So, hopefully I haven't left you guys behind with all of my rantings here. <coughs> We are still just extruding, scaling, and occasionally rotating and duplicating. Um, <clears throat> we are getting pretty close to being finished with it here. Pretty close. We're almost there. Almost there. A lot of people would fast forward through this kind of stuff and be like, well, I already taught you how to do it, whatever. But I don't want to do that. I don't want you guys to be lost. I know it's sometimes it's frustrating when you're going through a tutorial and uh, somebody goes fast forward or they go a little too fast for you and you get finished with your product and your product doesn't look the same as what the tutorial one did and then you feel lost and frustrated and you don't really understand why and you end up giving up pretty quickly so I like to try and take you guys through each and every step when it's possible. Um, if you guys have watched my sculpted tree tutorial, then you know that uh, sometimes that just cannot be done. Uh, unfortunately for the sculpted trees, it would have taken four or five hours to have you guys follow along with every little thing that I did because sculpted trees are quite an undertaking in Blender. But flowers aren't, uh, aren't too bad. We'll have this finished hopefully in about a half hour, maybe a little bit more, maybe, just depends. Do, do, do. <clears throat> so, uh, I've run out of things to talk about. How about my day today? Hmm, Casey, how was your day today? Well, I uh, had an issue with my car. My car was leaking gas, so my buddy decided to look at it because he works on cars. And as soon as he touched it, it just started gushing gas everywhere. So I was stuck at work for a good two or three hours. We were trying to fix it. He felt bad, and uh, we couldn't get it fixed. So he gave me a ride home. Here I am. <laughs> oh, that car lasted me a, about a year and a half. 208,000 miles on it. It was a 2000 Buick Century. I am going to miss that car, and I cannot afford a new one, so I guess we'll see what, uh, we will see what happens. How was your day today, Internet? Oh, ha ha ha, she said that. No way. Whoa. I'm kidding, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> Anyways, we are almost finished here, if you've put up with my <laughs> nonsense so far. We're getting close here. Just a little bit further. Just a couple more pedals here. And uh, if you have taken that extra second to zoom out, you're probably looking at it going, wow, that's <laughs> that doesn't look very good at all. Just bear with me, guys. 
if you've gone way ahead of me or you paused the video and finished it, just hold on. We're going to make it look beautiful. Going to make it look very, very nice. Just got to let me finish the petals first. Now you'll see I'm overlapping a lot of these. I should have mentioned that. Overlapping is completely fine. We're going to fix that as well. It's going to end up being like a, a height difference sort of fix to it. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but I will explain. Just got one, one more pedal to go. Last pedal. Here we go. Last one. Almost there. Just a little bit more. <clears throat> Aha, there we go. Okay, so, like I said, if you're looking at this now, you're going, yeah, that doesn't look very good. And if you tab out and go out of your wireframe, well, first things first, our normals are flipped. So let me go back into edit mode, and I'm just going to hit A to select all of my vertices. So mesh, normals, flip. Okay, so now we can see our normals. All right. So now, before we do any more editing on this thing, we need to add a material. So let's go to our materials tab right here. Click new. And I'm going to name this Petals, because they are flower petals, of course. And we need to unwrap this to our image. So let's go to our compositing. Let's open up our sunflower picture. And I'm going to hit 7 on my numpad to bring me back to my top view. I'm going to hit U, project from view, bounds. And that'll fill that flower in perfectly. And if you want to see what that looks like, you can go ahead and add a texture, image texture node. And since we already have this as our background image, we can go ahead and just click the tab, drop down tab, select our sunflower, connect that to our diffuse node. And let's go to do, do, do material. Tab out of edit mode, and there we have it. So, you will notice there are a lot of white areas, and that's completely fine. We're going to get rid of those at the end. But, you can see how it is overlaid, and it looks very, very nice. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, alright guys, so uh, something happened, and my blender crashed, and uh, completely pooped out on me. So, I had to uh, go back, I had this file saved. Uh, some of the stuff uh, is kind of already done, but I tried to get back to where I was, so hopefully you guys can follow along with me. Uh, let me see here. My compositing. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I still have my... Uh, da -da -da -da. What did I do? Okay, here we go. Let me just uh, get rid of all that for the material. Add in my diffuse shader. Okay, so now, here we are, back to pretty much where we were. And I've added in a image texture. Whoa. Why is that all out of whack? Oh, 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 this is the wrong one. Uh, let me see here. Let me blah, 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 project and view bounds. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're pretty much back to where we were. Let me go ahead and connect this up to here. Hopefully it doesn't poop out on me again. Why is that showing up purple? It is unwrapped. Oh, <laughs> duh, I don't have a picture in there. Load my sunflower. Ah, there we go. Okay, so go to my material view for you. And like I said, we have the white spaces on the outside, but we have basically our flower before Blender decided to crash. Anyways, let me go back to my default view. And uh, one thing I did do is I went from flat shading to smooth shading, which isn't all that important now, but it will be here in a bit. So now we have all of these flowers and they're gonna overlap each other, these petals. So what we want to do is go down here to our face select. And we just want to take 
every other petal and select hold shift and right click to select the every other petal face and I think I've already done this but I'll do it again just to just to show you because this is an important step unfortunately I can undo materials I cannot undo modeling so just bear with me guys yes I already did this so make sure your proportional editing is now turned off oh I think it already was turned off I don't think we got to that step yet anyways make sure it is turned off if it is on I don't think it would be on but whatever and this one is already done but you're basically just gonna grab it with the G and then hit Z on the Z axis so that these kinda move around freely and I'm just gonna move it up slightly where I, I guess I've already done that but you get the idea you're just gonna move it up so that they're not overlapping each other that's all you're gonna do just move it up a little bit and if there's any inconsistencies you see any pedals that just aren't making any sense some that you want to go through each individual pedal or something like that and maybe move some behind others and, and you can do that if you want you can put this one up here or I don't know you can take this one here and I don't know move this one up like that and it's whatever you want to do just make sure that they're not like overlapping each other that's the big the key point here so now that we've done that <coughs> let's go back to our vertices select mode and we're just going to hold down control that's going to give us this lasso tool so we can draw our selection and we're going to lasso around the entire outer edge making sure that we get in between the last vertices and the other vertices okay that's a really small one I'm gonna grab those zoom in on this one there we go I'll come in and grab these ones Whoop. And let's go ahead and grab these ones. Like this. And then we'll come up here. We'll get these ones like this. I really hope you guys can follow along with this. I uh, stupid blender crashed. I would have went back and redid that. I just don't I don't have a whole lot of time today, so Hopefully you guys understand where I'm at and what I'm trying to do here. Anyways, we've got these, these outer vertices selected. So what we want to do is we want to go to our proportional editing and enable it. And it should be set on smooth. If it is not, make sure you set it to smooth. We're going to hit G and Z. And you might have to use your mouse wheel to adjust the size of the circle. But we're basically just going to pull it up. So let me see. Let me grab that in a little bit. I'm going to pull it up, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, right, right about there. Okay, that's looking about right. Now we're starting to look a little bit more like a flower. So if we tab out, this is basically what we've got. We're still looking a little rough around the edges, and there's a few more little details that we need to do with it. So we're in our modifier tab. That is the little wrench looking tool right here. And we're going to add a modifier we're going to add our solidify and it is going to look crazy at first that is fine let it look crazy uh, the thickness now I have over here in my scene tab you can change your units from blender units to metric or imperial I have mine set to metric I think it is on blender units by default so if you want to set yours to metric I would recommend that you do so go back to your modifier and in the solidifier there's a thickness option right here and it says one centimeter we want to up that to two centimeters I don't know what that conversion is to blender units so if you're using blender units I don't know do your best good luck more power to you anyways I can shrink that down now and the next one I want to add is a subdivision surface modifier Ta -da! and we only need one so we're here right here where it says render you're gonna probably see a two we only want one so let's move that back down to one and now we're looking much, much smoother, much cleaner, looking much more like a flower. So if we go to our rendered view. <coughs> oh, actually, I don't have a light. I don't have a light in my scene. Let me go back to solid. Go to my world tab, and I'm just going to... Oh, I do have a light. Well, well, whatever. I'll show you anyways. 
make sure you set your it, it'll say use nodes click on use nodes and then we want uh, environment texture and then I'm just going to use a ba -ba -ba. I'm just going to use an HDR image real quick because that'll give me quick and easy lighting and I've set the strength to 4 because it's kind of a dark HDR image if you don't have an HDR image you could use a JPEG image uh, just make sure you set the strength up a little bit more because I think they turn out a lot darker um, anyways let me go ahead and go to my rendered view so we can see kind of what we're looking at here cross with my fingers that blender does not crash on me again all right that's not bad we're actually looking like a flower so I guess we should go ahead and take care of the material for this beast go back to my solid view and I'm gonna go up here and go to compositing okay so <clears throat> if you do not have the program crazy bump I highly suggest that you go out and you get it there's a at least a free trial there might be free programs out there that do the same thing as crazy bump I have not found one yet if you are a user of blender and you intend to be serious about your CG work I highly suggest that you just purchase crazy bump uh, it is not my product I'm not pushing this product on anybody however the next part of this tutorial requires a normal map and a specularity map and crazy bump will generate that from this image and it will take you about two seconds so let me uh, go ahead and show you I have those preloaded in here here is my normal map of the flower if it decides to load and not crash on me come on come on come on there we go oh that's not the right one I do not have them preloaded Ugh. blunder is being weird today all right, I'm going to just duplicate my image texture here. And I have it named as Sunflower 2 Normal. Yay! Woo! Okay, so let me find it now. Aha! Much better. This is what it looks like. This crazy purplish, bluish, pinkish, whatever you want to call it. Basically, that's what's going to give our flower a bit of texture, a bit of depth. And we're going to use it for the middle portion, too. <clears throat> so, since we have this up here. Oh, make sure we select the from color to non-color data. We're going to add in a vector, normal map, and connect the color to the color. Boop. And now we're going to connect the normal of that to the normal of our diffuse. And that'll give us a decent texture. So, we're getting there. We're getting closer. Next thing we want to do is we want to add, I believe it's our, yeah, it's our translucent shader that we want. So we're going to shader, add shader. We're going to connect that up. <clears throat> and our shader, translucent. And we'll connect the translucent into the bottom of the add shader. Our diffuse is in the top of the add shader. And you can see we get really, really bright results over here. So what we want to do is just take the color from our original image texture and plug that into our translucence. Now we get this, uh, the colors are correct and the brightness comes through and everything's going to look hopefully fantastic by the time we're done. So next we want to add our glossy shader. So shader, glossy, and shader mix shader we're going to connect the glossy into the bottom and I'm, I'm going to keep the roughness at about a 0.2 I think it works fairly decently that way now I'm going to duplicate my image texture and I'm going to open my specularity map so now that I have a specularity map in here let me show you what that looks like this gray and black thing. This is basically what uh, decides what part of the flower gets 
kind of a glossy result and which ones don't. Um, without it, it just kind of looks like an image behind glass. So, like I said, you can get both of these, um, the normal map and the specularity map, by using Crazy Bump. You just plug that original flower image that you have into Crazy Bump, and then there's an option down there that just says save all image files, and it saves all of the specularity, diffuse, ocularity, octave, whatever it's called. <laughs> but it saves all of those, and then you can just plop them in here. It's real simple, real easy. So now we're going to add a converter, color ramp. Connect our color of our image texture into that. And then plug that into the factor of our mix shader. And you immediately see that we're getting different results over here. And on our original image, we're getting different shading results. So, click on this little white color. There's a black color at one end and a white color at the other. And if you just darken that up a little bit, that'll give you less glossiness. And less is probably better for this. So, we'll go right about in there. Right about halfway. Okay, so we're almost done. Almost done. Let's add in a shader, uh, mix shader, and now we need our transparency, transparency shader, transparent, and the transparent goes into the top of our mix shader. So all the other ones go into the bottom, the transparent goes into the top. And now from our original image, the alpha, from there goes into the factor of our mix shader. Boom. Basically what that's going to do is these white parts, <coughs> it's not going to show up here, it's going to show up in your render. The white parts here are just going to disappear. You're just going to have the actual flower petals. That's exactly what we want. All we've done is we've just removed the alpha, the transparent parts around the flower. <coughs> and now the last thing we need to do is take our normal map and make sure that we plug that into the normal of our glossy. Once we get that into the normal of the glossy, I think we're pretty much all set on this. So let's go back to our default. And let's try and get our cursor in the middle. I don't know how well that's going to work out. Whoa, I was way down there. Oh yeah, that figures. Okay, let's do that. Do that. Ha, ah, there we go. Okay, so we're pretty close. Let me uh, let me put in my put in my background image again. Yeah. Whoo! Wow. Background image is huge. Okay, let me not put in the background image. Let's uh, forget that. It's because I've done a little bit of resizing on this. Anyways, let's go ahead and Shift A mesh. Oh, not sphere, not sphere. Shift A mesh circle. We're going to scale that down, and I want to scale it on the X a little bit, because for some reason it turns out a little bit bigger on the X. Yours might be a little bit different, depending on uh, the picture of the flower that you've gotten. And now we just want to make sure that it comes up above our flower petals. Let's go to our front view, tab into edit mode and we're going to extrude that on the Z. We'll just extrude it just below the flower petals like that. And then we want to extrude it one more time on the Z. We just want to whoop, 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 turn our proportional editing off and scale that down like this. And extrude on the Z again. We'll scale that in. And then we'll just, I guess we'll just make a face. But while we have these selected, let's go ahead and go Mesh, Snap, Cursor to Selected. And uh, now we need to select these top vertices here. So I'm just going to Box Select in Wireframe Mode. That'll select everything, and then I'll hit F to make a face. No, actually, I don't want to do that. No F. Forget the F. Control Z if you need to undo that. <coughs> We're just going to hit Extrude E and then right click that'll put it right over top of our other one and then we're just going to scale it in and we're going to do that just a couple of times 
extrude, right click, and then scale it in. Okay, once we get a little circle in the middle, then we'll hit F, make a face. And should be good to go. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and smooth shade it. And that immediately makes it look much better. And make sure we tab into edit mode, select it all. And if we don't have a material, then we need a new material. And hit U. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go to Compositor. <coughs> Make sure we're in top view, and we are. Go back to our sunflower picture. We will hit U, project from view bounds. And then we just want to scale this right over top of our flower center. And then we'll add a texture, image texture. Plug that in, and when we want to select our sunflower picture again. So now we can kind of get a view of it. We want this, for some reason it doesn't want to turn out very center. Eh, that's not bad. Okay, so uh, <coughs> once we have that, we're basically going to have the same setup as we did last time, minus a little bit. So we're going to duplicate our image texture and make sure we grab our normal map again. It's the same images we used before. And non-color data. Add vector normal map into here. And then we will plug that into our diffuse. And with this one we don't need the translucency and we don't need the transparency. We're just going to add a glossy shader. So shader, mix shader and add shader glossy shader and for the roughness on the glossy shader let's make it a 0.45 we'll plug that into the bottom of our mix shader plug our normal into the normal of our glossy and we're getting closer so now let's uh, duplicate our image texture and grab our specularity map add in our converter color ramp Connect that up, and then connect that into the factor of our mix shader. And this one we're going to want quite a bit darker. So go to that white color, and let's just pull that down. Something about like that. Alrighty, I think that is it for that. So, since we have our cursor right here at the bottom since I had you guys do that <coughs> we're gonna go ahead and shift a and add a circle I'm gonna scale that way down tab in edit mode we're gonna extrude on the Z scale it inwards and we're gonna rotate it a little bit and we're gonna do the same again scale it down and we'll rotate scale right about here like that <coughs> and then we just want to extrude it out and we don't want it to be perfectly on the y-axis we want it to actually have a little bit of craziness to it because flower stems are kind of crazy and make sure you smooth shade that and for this one I don't like to go too crazy with the stem so let's just, uh, oops, for the color, let's just make it a nice green. And we'll darken that way down, way, way, way down. Go to our compositor. And the only thing we're going to do is add a glossy shader. So mix and glossy. And 0.2 is about right, I think. And then we'll go 0.05, I think. <clears throat> for the factor of our mix shader. All right, so our flower is pretty much done. Uh, if you really wanted to, if the stem came out just a little too rough and jagged, you could always add a subdivision surface modifier and smooth it out just a, bit, a little bit. Same with the uh, middle of the flower. It's too smooth for me. I don't like it that way. I'll just keep it this way. Anyways, now we are pretty much done with our flower. So if I hit Z to wireframe mode, I'm going to box select everything. 
And I'm gonna, since it's, I've got the stem going this way, that means I have to rotate it by minus 90. And I'll go ahead and set that up like this on my grid floor. And let me check my camera view. And if you gotta move your camera, you can always just hit one on your numpad. Zoom in a little bit on your flower, and then you can hit Control alt 0 on the numpad, and it'll move your camera to wherever you want it. And I'm going to grab it on the Y, pull it in a little closer, and on the Z, something like that, except I want my flower to have a little dimension to it. So I'm going to rotate my flower on the Z. Whoops, I grabbed my camera. <coughs> Okay, here we go. Now, rotate it on the Z. Let's go... Whoa, 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 whoa. Trying to figure out what way is what. Uh, let's rotate it... Da, da, da. Let's get it right about, right about there. That should look pretty good. <coughs> and, uh... Let me make sure my render settings are okay. I'm just going to render it at about 100. And everything else looks good. So let's give this a render. Alright, so here's how our flower turned out. I think it looks pretty darn good. We have the uh, light kind of shining through the back side of the petals. But the darker red color showing through. It's got very nice texture, very nice lines on it. The uh, center I probably could have moved back just a tad you can see a little bit of the stretching on the side but uh, that's not not too bad so if you're planning on making a scene and you have a little extra time a little extra patience that you want to spend on getting your flowers correct this is basically how you would do it this will work for pretty much any flower that you have um, some flowers are a little bit different. Some have light, more light that shines through them. Some are a little more transparent. Um, you can always fiddle around with that, but this will this will get you a very nice flower. So if you want to populate your grassy areas with a, a very nice flower like this, or if you want to uh, put them in a vase or something like that, I would highly recommend that you use multiple sunflower pictures uh, so that you get a bit of a variety, or else they all end up looking the same. But uh, I think that this turned out really well. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I try to do these on a weekly basis. So if you like my tutorials, go ahead and give me a subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.